There goes one right there. Boom, that one's going. Boom, look at that, look at that. Guys, that's a massive bite right there. All right, guys, we're out here right at sunrise. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is slick as glass out here. It was only boat at the ramp this morning, but it's gonna get worse. We've got a front coming through. Winds are gonna pick up. It's supposed to be 10 to 15 sustained, gusting up to 23, 25. Uh, the bottom line is things are going to change, but for now we're going to do some drifting and dragging, comparing these black demon dragons to the black styrofoam peg floats. Now what I've done is taken a regular demon dragon and I painted it black. Uh, I tried this out in a video yesterday, fished it side by side with a green styrofoam float. We caught more fish on the black demon dragon. About halfway through that trip, I decided, you know what, let's make this a little more apples to apples comparison. So I took a Sharpie and uh, made the styrofoam corks black. Bottom line was, I think we caught eight fish. Seven of them came on the spray painted black demon dragon. And I think there's a reason for that. We'll get into that later. For now, I'm gonna get some bait on the hooks. I'm dragging four pieces of chicken, two rods, have gizzard shad on it. At the end of the day yesterday, the chicken was catching all the fish. Each rod's gonna have the same number of baits, so let's get them cut up and get them in the water. We'll take these rods that are going straight out the back. That'll be the ones on the corner rod holders, and we will put the gizzard shad on those and then put the chicken on the other rods that are on the planer boards. Port side of the boat will be all styrofoam floats. Starboard side, we're gonna have all demon dragons. Remember guys, I drag pretty small pieces down through here. You may ask yourself, why such small pieces of chicken? I think when these fish are hitting on this stuff, they're more keyed in on eating some of the mussels. I don't think they're gorging on big, big baits. That's what those floats look like, the ones I hit with the Sharpie. I'm gonna try doing a better job with them and get them with some paint. There is one of the black demon dragons. Guys, I was just dealing with a snag on one of my planer boards, and I think there's a fish on this demon dragon cut bait that's out the back here. If it is, it's very small. If it's not, I'm gonna need to check the bait anyway. Nope, there's a fish on it. Small fish, it was just a very thunk, thunk, thunk bite. Well, we got one hooked up. Demon dragon side, they're taking the early lead, guys, taking the early lead. And that ain't long into this drift either. I just, uh, Really just got started. Nurse it up, make sure we get it up here. There he is. There he is, good eater size blue. Oh. Demon dragon with the early lead on the cut bait. That mouth open, that hook out. Oh, good fish, got some mud on it. Back alive. There he goes right there. Ha ha ha, look at that. That's what I want to see. Boom. That's a bite. That is a bite outside planter board. Good fish, good fish. This one is on the peg float side of the boat. Stay buttoned up, baby. Man, we pulled a long way since that last fish. I dragged in the river channel for a while and then came up here onto a hump. There's a hump here next to the river channel. Traditionally, there have been fish here. I think they feed on mussels up on this hunt. So then we got some chicken out. That's what this is on, by the way. Figured I'd drag across this. This is a good fish. I don't think it's a giant giant, but a good fish nonetheless. Anything that bows the rod this much, I will take. Try to get this planer off of here so I can deal with it. Key here, folks, is keeping that tip bent. One of the things I love about these big cat fever trolling rods is they've got a very flexible tip. It really helps with getting planer boards off, especially when you're alone. Bottom line is you got to keep the tip bent so that you keep pressure on that fish. Keep that hook in case that hook's in a less than ideal place. Maybe nettable. 30 pound Andy monofilament. Ancient Mariner reel. Big cat fever. Medium light trolling rod. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. We'll take that one. Bok, 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 chicken. Four of the baits out. We've got six rods out. Four of them are chicken. Two of them straight out the back are gizzard. Covered in mud. Absolutely covered in mud. There it is. What's he going to weigh? That's 16 pounds. Ah, stop, simmer down. Look at that mud, guys. That fish is covered in it. Look at that. He's got mud all over him. There he is. See that mud on him? That's usually a sign right there, guys, that some fish have not been moving a lot. Not eating a lot. We got this one to eat. Get him back alive, I'll show you what he hit. 
There it is, the old Sharpie painted. Looked like he might've hit the float first. That's got some uh, abrasion on it there. Number two in the boat, a little 16 pounder. Happy to get them. Pow, three good bites, two of them on the floats, one on the demon dragons, two fish to the boat, one on each of the different floats. Man, a flurry of activity. Uh, I had just taken my jacket off. It was just starting to get a little bit warm out here. The sun was peeking out. And literally in the time it took me to catch those two fish, those three bites that we had, it's clouded up and I'm starting to get just a little bit of breeze out of the south. And uh, we're just gonna pull this for a while, see what happens with the wind and then make some adjustments there uh, on where, you know, what our setup is and what our angle is on where we're drifting through here. But see if we can stay on some fish in here. All right, guys, I got these going out on this side, knocking that into gear. And I got this outside rod going here too, boom. This on the Demon Dragon side, another outside planter board on chicken. We just barely got that one back in the water and got those rods back out. This one went. I think there's some fish on that hump. Uh, there's a little hump. Like I said, I think they come in there and feed on mussels. That might be why they're hitting this chicken more than they're hitting anything. So we may have to go back over that place. If I'm catching fish, I'm happy. That was the plan today. I'm not fishing super big baits. I'm just trying to get a little comparison with these floats on here. One, how effective this black is. I think the black pay, plays a difference. After we get this fish in, I'll explain my theory on it. That's a decent fish. This is on a Hellcat rod, a little heavier action. It's got some backbone. This is a big fish rig here. Takes care of these fish without a problem. That planer board off. Again, you can just slide these things down the line if you want to. I like to get them off just so I ain't got to deal with them once I get them up here at the boat. I just think it's easier. It's up to you. I don't think this one is as big, but a fish nonetheless. Beautiful morning. Wind hadn't picked up yet. You can see some of the clouds I hit with that front. We've still got the inflow coming in out of the south here. Eater size. Boom. I was going to eat some. That would be the one. On the chicken. This thing got hit earlier. I don't know if it was hitting the bait, the float, or what. Get him back alive. So why the black floats on the drift rigs? I think in this stained water, muddy water, water with very limited visibility, I think the darker colors work better. I decided to give it a try, paint these things up, and just see how they perform. And maybe the fact that the bright green color just doesn't look natural in a low visibility environment. I just know a lot of fishermen uh, in low visibility water that are fishing artificials will change around what they do with the coloration of it. Giving it a try, seeing how it works, seeing how it performs, see if it gives more of a shadow look uh, that you would get in an area without a lot of light penetration. But I'm gonna play around with it some this year. My theory is I'm going to catch more fish on it. Black Betty, that's the name, by the way. When you contact Tackle Bandit, tell them you want Black Betty and use the promo code CATFISH. They better give you a discount. It goes right there. That one. Boom. Got one going there, too. Got one on the cut bait, the shad. That's this rod. And it is on a green float, styrofoam. Outside one's on chicken, and it's on a styrofoam float. Good problem to have. Hopefully that outside one stays hooked up. I made a turn away from the river channel. Dragged that again. Nothing in there. Just wasn't getting bit. Getting him in the boat. Nice eater sized fish. Come out of there. Come out of there. Mud. Mud, mud, mud. They got the mud. Old mud covering. Eaters. That one's going. He's on there. Get him released. Just so you see it. Right there is a regular pig float. Now let's get this planter board outside here. Oh, I think he pulled off. He did pull off. That'll happen. You give them too much time without putting pressure on them. It's easy for a hook to wear out, wear loose there. Sadly, he won't count. Boom, that one's going. Boom, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that one go. Tell you what, I better deal with this one. We got him feeding this one. Demon dragon. And this one is on shad. And we're down a couple rods right here. We're a little hot zone here. There's some fish right here. We may have to come back through this. That's a lot of bites in a short area. This one has the demon dragon. It has cut bait on it, just like that one that we pulled in. The other hit on that outside was on chicken. I may have to check a few of these. We kind of came through a little stumpy, rocky area there. Clouds starting to roll in. No wind yet. It's a coming. Get him in here. Shook. Look at that mud. 
dad gum that one covered in it dude there's a lot of mud on them fish hmm a lot of mud get them back alive there you go there's fish number four and five we should have had six we should have had that other one but i was dealing with getting the other one in and just basically had to hope that one stayed hooked up that was a pretty good bite on that one i think we may have it's a little more evenly split today than it has been with the demon dragons and the styrofoam floats two on the peg floats and three on the demon dragons it would have been tied had we got the other one in I got a feeling as these clouds roll in, we're probably going to have uh, some wind pick up too. So see what develops with the wind. Once the wind gets going, uh, it may change the way I set up and position the boat. Let's see what happens here. Hopefully we'll get a few more before the uh, rain and wind gets bad. Guys, that's a massive bite right there. Oh, boom. Good fish. It's gotten windier. Hopefully you can hear me. I got some wind screens on the camera. I made a move. Ran a few miles. I honestly think I was just on the other side of the wind front with this thing. I'm on the windy side now. Big drift sock out, making a big long pull across here. We're gonna see what we can get into. I just had one hit this rod over here, did not hook up. That was on the peg float side. This is on the demon dragon side. And this one is hooked up. This is the most wind we've seen in a few days here. That, stay back down, stay back down. Yeah, it's gusting pretty good up here, but I got the big Easterland drift sock out. We got it slowed down to about half a mile an hour, so we'll be fine. This is on chicken, by the way. Take a pretty good breeze. That's a nice fish. I might have to bug the grip him. Oh, popped off right there at the boat. Sorry I didn't get the net and try to get him in the boat. We got him another one on the Demon Dragon. I think that's four now on those three on the uh peg floats this will be interesting across here it's a big long pull it's a big flat then a river channel back onto a flat on the other side it's kind of a set it and forget it i've got the big drift sock out we're just going to make a long drag across here and uh, deal with the wind yeah we're doing about 0.5 so the easterland drift sock's got to slow down same kind of water up here it, it's dingy dirty stained messed up so It'll just be a matter of, uh, we're going to eat and fish up here. There we go, guys. Inside planer board. Boom. Picked up. Picked up. It ain't crazy through here, but we're getting bit. This one's on chicken and a demon dragon. Wind's laying down a little bit. Man, it's warm. It is. They were calling for highs today in the 70s, which is crazy for this time of the year but I'll take it all day long. May get there, we'll see. I'm keeping my jacket on. The last time I took my jacket off, the sun disappeared and it got cold. So I'm gonna keep it on for a little bit. A fairly decent little bite over here. I'm kind of, I mean, we've caught some and this one's wrapped, he is an eater. I ought to net him because he's probably gonna pop off as much as he's wrapped. Oh, oh, oh. oh he didn't. Bam, got him. Got a little scar on him from something, but happy to have him. Didn't get back alive. There it is, guys. There's the rig. Demon Dragon. Piece of chicken on the bait. I got a feeling the area I'm coming through here, there's some mussels in here. This area that typically you get some fish stacked up in. It's also area. There goes one right there. There goes one on that side. Heck yeah, that's a good hit. As I was getting ready to say, it's a place where you can get some good fish. I think this is a decent fish. This one is on the peg float side. It's also a chicken bait. For whatever reason, a much better bite. I don't know if it has to do with the wind or it's just the location. It's like I was saying earlier, total lack of bait fish over here. Nowhere near as much bait as there was in the other area that we were fishing. And I think that just gives us a lot less competition. We got catfish all over this lake. When they got a lot to eat, well, they may not want to eat what you've got. Sometimes it means you can catch more fish, so. Who knows, there's a lot of variables when it comes to fishing. Uh, you know, uh, we got all kinds of stuff here. We got, we got weather, we got location. You just gotta fish, guys. If you can cover water, whether you're on the bank or in a boat, you know, one place ain't working, try something else. 
It's nice to put a couple of them in the boat here kind of quickly. Big Cat Fever trolling rods. Ancient Mariner reels, every one of them. They're 6,000 series. Easy, easy. I'm going to net this thing just to make sure I get it. Come on. It's hard to see where these things are in this dingy water. Yep, it's got to be close. There he is. There he is. Nice one. Nice one. That one makes me happy. Another one in the teens. Let's get a look at him. Heck yeah. Be right around 20 pounds. We'll take that all day long. Bigger than I thought he was. Nice fish. Here's guys. Not as much mud over here on these fish. That is a good one. Let's get it back alive. started to pick up it's pretty consistent now we got about 12 to 15 sustain we got some 18 to 20 mile an hour gusts the drift sock's working uh, i'm still doing about 0.5 across here just a matter of whether uh we're going to get onto some biting fish we're coming back onto a flat the bad side on this side of the river channel is i'm not marking a lot of fish for whatever reason and as i say that i got a rod going off let's get it that is a fish oh, oh pinky I'm sure y'all can barely hear me at this point, but I got a fish. This is crazy. It's actually the best bite I've had all winter. If we get this one in, it'll be fish number 12, and some uh, it's the most fish I've caught this winter. It's also the worst conditions, wind-wise, but honestly, it's not cold. It's up into the, I would say, mid-60s now. I'm surprised I haven't taken this jacket off. The only reason I hadn't taken it off because the boat ride back is going to be wet. I'm going to check to see which rig I have on here. I'm pretty sure it's a Demon Dragon. I got one mixed up, one of them. That green rod's on that side, so one of these is a peg float. And yep, this is it. Demon Dragon's taking the lead again. Shoo! It is a howling. There he is, dude. Not as much mud, but some mud. I'm gonna let him have that piece of shad. That's the least I can do. Hey, I'm gonna try to duck out of the wind here a little bit so you can hear me. Man, that is fish number 12. This has turned out to be a really good day of fishing. Again, I don't know if it's where I end up fishing. I'm fishing a little different area than where I fished yesterday. If it's just the conditions, the, the front coming through, the wind picking up, the cloud cover rolling in, it's hard to say exactly what it is. Bottom line is I caught a lot of fish. I think the demon dragons have caught more today. Go back and add the numbers up uh, slightly more, not as dominating as it was yesterday though. The bottom line is they work, they catch fish. Do they catch more in these rough conditions, dirty water, who knows? We're gonna keep fishing with them and find out more as the year goes on. You'll see these things used a lot more, a lot of different colors, a lot of different variations. I'm happy to catch this many fish in the winter. Springtime's a coming. All right, guys, got an outside planer board going. It's on the demon dragon side on a piece of chicken. Man, it is a howling. Howling wind, baby. How fast we going? 0.5. 0.5 in a 15 mile per hour sustained wind gusting 20 to 22. That's what that drift sock will do for you. Nice, nice, nice. I was just getting ready to go home. I was just like, you know what? What an incredible day of fishing. I'm so happy to finally catch some fish, man. After getting my butt kicked on so many trips, it is nice to smoke them for once. This one is on chicken. And I'm not sure if this may be actually, I thought it was on a demon dragon, but it may be on the styrofoam float. I know one of them on this side is a peg float and this is a peg float. Nice eater sized fish. Boom. And all the chaos of dealing with uh, the wind and everything else, I knew I threw one out on the wrong side of the boat. Little cleaner fish. Good eater size fish. Man, it's a nice one. Boom, got one going. Outside planer. This one is a demon dragon. Go hooked up. I'm going home after this. 
But I need to show y'all the pictures of the truck that is stuck in my driveway. It's a little baby tractor trailer. Rooms to go. Thank you. Fascinating. Don't know how they do it. I don't drive a truck for a living, but I could turn a truck around with all the room they had. Number 14. What a day. What a winter day of fishing. Man. Get my mojo back. Mojo. Mojo. And I'm doing it in dirty, stained water. Bang. There it is, guys. There's the demon dragon. What a day of fishing. I'm telling you, we didn't catch any tournament winning fish, but who cares? This kind of fishing, this kind of fun, this kind of great bite in the winter. Try to get him back in the water before he smashes his head again. There it is. Number 14. What's the takeaway on this day? Both of these floats catch fish. It's stacked in favor of these, though. A lot of fish were caught on these today. Are they worth trying? That's up for you to decide. If you can afford them, buy them, give them a try. If you can't afford them, stick with the peg floats. You'll catch fish. The bottom line is, guys, Go fishing. That's the name of the game. Go fishing.